Okay, so this is my Raspberry Pi 400 running ordinary Raspberry Pi OS, and uh, and it works great. But uh, I tried a lot of USB boot recently because my SD card slot doesn't work on this one. I've contacted the company. Uh, I'm just waiting for a response to see about getting a replacement. But in the meantime, uh, I would say you're much better off with an SSD drive. SSD drives work way, way better on a Raspberry Pi. And uh, you just need a cheap cable. So this is $7.99 for a SATA to USB 3 cable. And uh, this Yukon drive is $15.99 for a 120 gig drive on Amazon at the moment. They do lots of different sizes. 120 is a, quite a nice size because you can put multiple operating systems on it. Okay, so let's plug in the SATA cable. And then we need to plug the SSD drive into the SATA cable. There we go. And let's switch over to screen capture. Okay, so this will show up when you plug in your drive. So just cancel that to get rid of it. And uh, we need to format the drive. Uh, and the best way to do that, I think, is with Raspberry Pi Imager. Uh, if you just call up Imager, go to Choose OS, go to Arrays. And this works with SD cards, USB sticks, uh, SSD drives, M.2 drives, NVMe drives, everything. Choose SD card, you can see that's come up. This is a 60 gig one. Uh, hit right and hit yes. And it's very quick as you can see there. So hit continue. Uh, I can close that down now. So this drive is ready for PinOS, uh, but we need to download PinOS. So let's go to the web browser and type in PinOSPi4. There we go, pin download. Then we can click on download. There you go, you can see that's downloading. It's only 48.9 megabytes, so it won't take very long. There you go, so that's finished. Click on it and show in folder. Then we can right click on it and extract here. There you go, so now we've got all those files Let's maximize that so you can see everything that's there. We can now delete the original zip file, just to keep this tidy. And then if you press Control A, that will select all the files, and then we need to drag them over to our 60 gig drive. You'll notice I have loads of drives here on the left-hand side. Don't worry about that, that's because I'm already using PinOS. But you won't have all these drives. You'll just have uh, the drive that you're running the system from and the drive that you've just formatted for PIN. So let's drag that over to that 60 gig volume and let go. And you can see this is copying over. And that's all copied, so if we click on the 60 gig volume, you can see that everything is in there. And that's all you need to do. So now what we need to do, and I'll switch back the camera for this bit. So we're gonna shut down, start, shut down, and shut down. Once everything is off, and we're sure it's off, we can now unplug. So if you were running this from an SD card, you would eject your SD card. I'm running this operating system from this USB stick, so I'm going to pull that out. So now the only thing plugged into here now, there's no SD card, is this SSD drive that I've just flashed with PinOS. So let's press the power button on the Pi 400. I hadn't realized, but there is a normal power button. I'd been unplugging and plugging in because I was used to the Pi 4. So press that button and release, and it will start to boot up. And I'll switch over to screen capture as soon as I can. Okay, and this is what you're presented with. Now, I'm using a wired Ethernet connection, so I don't have to do anything with Wi-Fi. But if you were using Wi-Fi, you need to click on Wi-Fi and you need to log into your network in the normal way that you would. Uh, and that will enable you to download any of these systems. So if I want to put multiple operating systems on here, I just tick the ones I want. So Twister is my favorite OS on Raspberry Pi. Uh, Ubuntu Mate 2010 is my second favorite, I would say. Uh, and then maybe for games, we want to do something like RetroPie. So I've clicked on all three, but there are other things in here. So you've, if you want a media center, then you've got this one. Uh, you've also got Raspberry Pi OS Lite, which is without a desktop environment. So uh, only if you like using terminal only. So project space, testing, 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS is very good as well. Uh, and then all you need to do is hit install and it'll install your chosen operating systems to the SSD drive. And you can see it also gives you some backgrounds of the things that you're downloading and some information as well. And when it's all done, this is the message you get. OS is installed successfully, so just click OK. 
and when it reboots and it goes past this screen, start pressing the shift key and you'll end up with this screen. Uh, just hit exit and you'll end up with this screen and uh, this shows all the operating systems. You can see there's more on here than I picked and that's because I've switched back over to that original USB stick I was using because I've already used this for a bit and I've already set it up with different operating systems sort of run through the, the language and the keyboard and things like that. So to save time, I've switched back over to the USB stick. Everything else is the same. So if I wanted to boot Twister OS, click on Twister and hit boot. And here you can see the wonderful Twister OS. Uh, this is a, an amazing operating system and my choice on the Raspberry Pi. I just love all the folder navigation. I love the way it looks. Uh, it works really well with my NAS drive. My printer works really well with it. Uh, I also like the fact that all the games are integrated. I've got other videos on Twister OS. So if you want to know a bit more about Twister OS, I'll point you over to those. But uh, it's a great operating system. So let's shut down and reboot into something else. So I press the shift key again on boot to be able to get back into this menu system. Uh, you can see on here at the top, there is uh, main menu and more. Uh, we have edit config. So if we wanted to overclock, and I'm not gonna overclock this one because this particular Pi 400 is probably gonna be exchanged for one with a working SD card slot. Uh, it's not really right for me to do a bit of an extreme overclock and invalidate the warranty. So I'm not gonna do overclocking for now, but if you were gonna overclock, this is where you edit the config.txt, and that applies to all the operating systems that are running in PIN. So you just do it once, uh, but then that works for all of these operating systems. Or as far as I know it does, it used to do that, but uh, Ubuntu Mate and Ubuntu uh, use a different way of overclocking. So I guess I'll see that in a later video. And uh, it often comes up when I do videos on PIN about adding extra operating systems to it. I haven't found a way, uh, but there are in some of my comments on some of my older PIN videos, uh, people have done it and been able to add uh, extra operating systems after the initial one uh, by way of cloning or all sorts of different things with partitioning. So I'm not really going to go into that because I think that's a bit more full on and uh, and actually I don't I, I have so many drives I don't tend to use very many multi-boot systems anymore I love Barry boot I love pin but uh, because I've got so many drives I tend to use dedicated drives for them but this is more for if you want to run multiple operating systems from one drive this is what you will need to do so let's go to exit and let's boot into something else let's try 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS Okay, so this is the 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS. It's the beta version, so it's a good way of trying it out with something like PinOS because you can use your OneDrive to be able to have multiple operating systems and just experiment with it. But uh, it does work very well. I find it's not as compatible as the 32-bit version, but, uh, but it does work very well and it's very good with files. Uh, if you find this is annoying that with PinOS you've got multiple drives on it, just right-click, do Desktop Preferences, and... Uh, hide the external disk there you go you still got access to them if you if you need to have it uh, by going into files but uh, it just means that you've got a nice neat desktop if you want to find out more about pin os or berry boot which are both multi-boot systems i've done more videos on berry boot actually but pin uh, has uh, got very good usb support um, and that's why i'm using it on my raspberry pi 400 so you can see i've done several videos on pin OS, uh, and also if we type Berry Boot in that same bit, you'll find that I've done a load on Berry Boot as well. Okay, so I hope all this helps. I hope you liked it. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.